Welcome to Nugget 78 with Steve Groman. In the last nugget, we talked about a June 2020 Scientific American article, right? Yeah. And I see you have a Discover June 2020 to talk about today. What's this article about? Well, we're going to cover the feature article right on the cover of Discover magazine that says Becoming Human. And then underneath it, it says Breakthroughs Shaking Up Evolution. It starts right off by saying these are heady times for paleoanthropologists. In the opening decades of the 21st century, new discoveries have refined and revised the story of human evolution at an unprecedented rate. Okay, this sounds like what you are saying all the time that these guys are doing. Absolutely all the time, that's what they do. I find it amazing because when a creationist says something that an evolutionist says is not true, the creationist is accused of being ignorant of science or narrow-minded or something to that effect. But what I find amazing is, in time, sometimes it doesn't take much time, the evolutionists themselves will say what they thought they knew isn't true and they found something else. So they can change their mind and say what they used to believe was true is not. But if we say, at the time, what they believe is true is not, we're ridiculed and just as amazing, absolutely amazing. If you have two people, you're going to have three different opinions in many cases, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like it says here, unprecedented rate, because they are there are a lot of people looking into this. So tell us, what does this article specifically discuss? Well, it's discussing five skulls that have been found over the course of time, but are being examined. And let's just read some of this. First wait, off... Wait, I want to interrupt you a second. Are these old skeletons and they're just rehashing information again? Is that basically what's going on here? Well, they're not necessarily old skeletons and old skulls in the sense of maybe what people would think. But yes, they have been discovered already, but they're still relatively recent time. It's all current time. Okay. That's why I wanted the recent findings, not yes. necessarily old, old, old findings. But the article starts out, paleoanthropologist Katerina Harvati, who co-authored a 2019 study in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution on the, the evolutionary history of the human face. She says that fossil skulls have the ability to convey not only a lot of information about the species to scientists, but also can give an immediate intuitive impression of what an individual would have been like as a person when alive. How on earth is that possible? How can they tell what someone would look like? Yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. And like it says here, and can therefore more easily capture the imagination of both scientists and the public. I find this stuff absolutely amazing because by looking at a piece of a skull or even a skull or most of a skull, that doesn't mean you can tell what that person was like when they were alive, but yet their imaginations can run wild with this. This is current science that they call it. There's so much just belief system built into all this. The article goes on, being face to face with an individual who lived thousands or even millions of years ago can lead the professionals astray. Yep. It continues. Our mindsets are like shop display windows that separate us from the mannequins. We look at these fossil skulls through our own mirror image and imaginations. It goes on and on talking about imaginations and, and what it is they believe things to be. And it just is absolutely amazing. It sounds like they're just getting kind of carried away and want to come up with something new and exciting, but that isn't scientific at all. No, it's not scientific at all. And like it says here, where they're advertising what the article's about, the five skulls that shook the story of human evolution. It certainly does too. Let's keep looking. It says when researchers with different visions look at the same ancient skull, often heated debates erupt. And that's another thing that I have been saying for years. The worldview matters. And I, I talk about it in relation to evolutionist versus creationist oftentimes, but it's the same with everybody and everything. The worldview that that person holds matters because that's the filter that they look at everything through. And they filter all the information through that particular filter. But it goes on. Such arguments have become more common in the 21st century with the discovery of each new fossil that challenges conventional thinking about evolution of hominins. Humans are nearest ancestor and kin species. So every time they find something, it throws them all in chaos. That leads to the, the issue that I've always said for all these years. Why is it that what is taught in the textbook is so factual all the time? I mean, when you look at the evidence for evolution section in just about any ninth or 10th grade biology textbook, it comes out very, very matter of fact that we evolve from these things. People learn that. 
and they, they end up believing that kind of stuff. It's just absolutely incredible. What I'm gathering from this is that when they relook at these things, these items, these fossils, they realize that what the evolutionists, prior evolutionists came up with about them isn't correct. They know that evolution has to be true, so they're just coming up with another scenario with some updated information. Is Could that just be the thing? Basically, that's, that's what you're saying is that yeah, that's exactly they, right. can, they can build on each other, say each other's wrong, but... We can't say both of them are wrong. This guy says this one's wrong. That one says that one's wrong. But then why can't I say, well, both of you are wrong? (laughs) Because obviously they don't agree. I like this next sentence you're going to read. Well, go ahead. You read it then. All right. The more fossils paleoanthropologists find and the more methods they have to study them, the murkier the story of human evolution seems. Well, why would that be if they have more information and more methods? You'd think it'd be fine-tuned and be (laughs) getting more exact. You would think so, but the problem is... No, but the problem is what they say never fits the evidence. And so they find new evidence, and now they have a justification for changing because it never fit the evidence anyway. It's amazing. The thing I think we need to point out here is most of you are not going to read Discover Magazine or Scientific American, and you're or probably Science wondering, News or any of those. why are we talking about this? Well, it's because uh, middle school children, high school children college students are learning these things in the time frame of the textbooks when they were written and the information that was available to them. Taught as a fact. Right, and they will go and they will argue with their parents or argue with other people, believing that this is true. And we want to point out to you and give you some ammunition as students to realize and to question that even though it's in your textbook and being presented by a professor in a factual way, it probably isn't if it's evolution-based. Yeah, read this next sentence. When there were few fossils, it was very easy to make a line and show a very linear evolution. Yeah, when we don't have much evidence, we can say whatever we want to say and make it add up. But well, now, it's look, easier to get from point to point, I guess. Yeah, and then look. Now we have a lot more fossils, and we see it's not so simple. It was much more complex, but we don't have enough fossils to understand it. <laughs> this is amazing, isn't it? Okay, I really am surprised that they write these sort of quotes. Yeah. And the thing is, I challenge people all the time, get any subscription of any science publication off off a library shelf and just read it. Every article in it, just about, you'll, it's written like this kind of thing. It, bottom line is, they really don't know anything. They believe a lot of things. They have their belief system, their faith system, but we get ridiculed oftentimes because we believe the Bible's true. But again, when it's in the textbooks, it's how humans evolve. Here's a a Raven Johnson. I've used this book in the past, but it says, humankind's closest living relatives are the African apes, chimpanzees, and gorillas like this mountain gorilla from Rwanda. It's very factually presented. It does not matter which textbook you get. They all are going to talk the same way, a very factual thing. But the information that this presentation of this textbook so factually presented is built upon and based upon is not true anymore so what these well their basic premise is still the same well their basic premise is we had to have come from something else yes we had to have evolved up the whole concept is it just does not hold water it's not science yes the bones are there no question they find bones we find bones we've we've been on many fossil digs but the worldview that says it's millions and millions of years old and used to be or is our ancestor and we used to we came from that it, it's just preposterous well i see that you have five or six more slides and i have a few more things i wanted to pipe in and this is already getting long so we'll just make this a two parter sounds good all right thank you We hope that you have been enjoying our nuggets and super nuggets that we have been producing. And you can send a one-time offering to help keep us doing these nuggets. That would be great. Or if you would like to become a monthly partner, that would be fantastic. Just contact us to find out how you can do that. Simply call or text 603-616-8907. And we thank you very much for listening and telling your friends about our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Help us spread the word of God's creation. Thank you.